more millionaires are made in this business. And every single one of those who made it at that level, like scrapped and clawed all the way through the process. The great thing is there's so much opportunity in this business. It's insane. Mm -hmm. And the more I'm in it, the more I'm amazed by it. You think I'd heard everything by now. I I haven't. I haven't, man. And I get excited when I hear this because there are people who are finding success, simply introducing themselves, creating opportunities, having conversations with people from, from the start. Welcome to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. Today's going to be a joy, Chris. You know why? First, we're together, man. We are together. Feels like it's been 147 podcasts and uh, we haven't been together on one in, what has it been, 17 years? I think the last one we were on, just me and you, was uh, a small Uh, mini-series. I think uh, think it did very well. I think uh, we got Mm -hmm. a lot of comments, a lot of compliments about it. And that's why the kids come, Zach. They come to see us. Uh, I like to think so. (laughs) I do, too. Uh, Yeah. Hopefully this ain't the cheap seats, you know? (laughs) That's right. What are we... uh, But today, today, Chris, today's going to be an interesting topic. I think this is this is such a relevant topic. This is a topic that uh, a lot of people are contemplating, um, and it, it's kind of referring to this fancy word called commitment, hmm. um, because you know a lot of people are out there that are in a job or in a career or making some sort of money or listening to this, even if you're in life insurance currently and listen to this, driving around or sitting at your desk in the morning, contemplating making another phone call. But there's always this thought in their mind. Am I built for something else? Am I made for something greater than what I have now? Um, something just doesn't feel right. Like I'm not satisfied. There's, it's, there's something meant to be more with me and my talents. Um, and that, that is not allowing them to, to commit to what they're currently in. Um, and then starts this question, which is this topic. Okay. Um, maybe I found out or maybe I heard, or maybe somebody introduced me to this podcast. Um, and I'm interested, you know, they talk about, they talk about the freedom. They talk about, um, being in control, you know, being the boss of you Inc, you know, being able to have uh, no ceiling on income. Um, but I think we try to do a very good job and try to be very transparent on the reverse side of that, which is, you know, removing the floor also yeah. and the dedication and the risk and the focus that it's going to take in order to be successful. Um, so some people, Chris, run and jump and they soar with this. Right. They spread their wings, they fly, and they're like, wow, I've never, um, I've never experienced anything like this. Now my dreams are becoming a reality. I see a pathway. Not that the moment you join insurance, you're, you're not going to be living on an island and all of that, right? It doesn't happen yet. It can't happen. It doesn't happen yet. It would be a small <laughs> island. It would be a very small <laughs> island. Probably like a sandbar, yeah. you know, when you're out I there. own this sandbar. <laughs> right. Exactly. Before the tide comes in. Exactly. But other people, they feel as it has to be all or nothing. Mm -hmm. In the reality, Chris, there's people with different personalities. Yes. I'll admit, I'll admit, (laughs) I am more of an all or nothing person. Yeah. I'm either Mm -hmm. 100% in or I'm not in at all. Right. I'm not putting any of my efforts, any of my energy, any of my time, any of my focus if, if I'm not in. But if I'm in you're getting 150% of it and it's, I'm going to find a way to make it work. Um, that's not always true for other people. Yeah. Um, some people can dip their toe in and get used to that. They can start gradually moving into an opportunity to fill it out, check it out <clears throat> before they're fully in and fully committed. Um, and the whole idea of this podcast, the whole idea of this topic is to help people that if you're stuck in a job that you're in now or a career that you're really unhappy with um, and you feel you're meant for something more, we want to introduce you to this amazing uh, life insurance industry. Yeah, it's unbelievable. 
but you don't have to jump full force in and leave everything in the safety and the salary, even though it may not be that much, even though it, it doesn't have the satisfaction. Um, you may not be able to take that full jump. We want to be able to talk about and answer some of those questions that you may have for yourself on, is it possible to get started in life insurance part-time? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I do, I like, I like how you started this conversation with this, uh, this word <laughs> commitment. You know, are you, are you fully in, are you fully out? Um, and you, you, you addressed a couple of things of why you would even be having that conversation. Uh, one, you said personality. Like mm-hmm. you have a personality that's all in or not, right? And actually, I think I'm, I'm kind of there as well personality-wise, but there are some other things that are at play. So it could be finances. Mm-hmm. That could be a major issue. Another one is just um, is what's at stake what is, you know, what, what's going on in the background in people's lives. And finally it's baggage, like the stuff people carry into this opportunity. So I'll, I'll talk about, um, first, let me mention like what's at stake. So when, when I came in, I did enter into this part time and being an all in or all out person, typically, I think that's how I'm wired is, uh, I'm, I'm not a, a tip, dip your toe in kind of person, except there were things at stake. I had two kids Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was very, uh, two little fellas, you know, they were very, very young at that time when I, when I jumped into this. So it was, I think, um, Cam was eight and Ty was five at that time. And, you know, the major transition. And then I had this other piece that was attached to it. It was baggage. Right. So mm-hmm. I had, and what I mean by that, I, I had my family that was at stake, these two young guys, two, I had baggage. When I moved here from Michigan, the housing crisis happened. We ended up losing a house during the housing crisis. We had to, we tried to rent it out, didn't work out. These guys flooded the house. It was a mess, dude. And then, <laughs> so ended up going up for auction. We did a, a short sale. It was, it hit our credit, all that stuff. So we were moving here got settled into the job that we loved, felt like I was going to be doing it forever. Boom. Downsized. I had to find something else to do. And then, uh, so I'm working at roofing sales. I'm waiting tables. I'm, you know, uh, doing hustling for tips, doing whatever I can. Then I run into Roger, get offered this, this opportunity. I see an amazing opportunity, but I've got these really three pieces here. Finances, um, what's at stake and baggage that went along with it. So yeah. I just want to give perspective because I think there are a lot of people out there who may find themselves dealing with one of those or all three of those. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, in a way, Chris, I think that helps prepare, like prepare you to move into an opportunity like this because your back is almost against the wall in yeah. some sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Failure is not an option for you yeah. uh, because you have all those 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 factors those, those variables like strongly depending on you, right? Correct. Um, came I came into this something similar. Um, you know, I, I was the just get a graduating college. Uh, I was working three different jobs. Uh, paid my way all the way through college. Uh, graduated with no debt, which was really really cool and exciting. In today's yeah, age, that's absolutely, like kind man. of that's a kind of win. difficult. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't making a ton. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of hours, um, you know, working day, day for a company and night for the same company. <laughs> and then on the weekends is doing my own lawn care um, and servicing a number of yards. And it was just nonstop. Grind, the one grind, thing grind. I didn't have was time. And honestly, I didn't have a lot of money right. versus the amount of work I was putting in. Um, but I had, I had bills. I was paying for, um, you know, a place to live and all the, all the normal bills, um, and I had some large upcoming expenses that were getting ready to be there. Um, and in order, when this opportunity was presented to me, um, I had to, it was impossible, I couldn't add four jobs, right? <laughs> I had to like replace the three guarantees yeah. for one, I don't know what's going to happen, but right. it could have high potential, right? right? Um, so I kind of had a similar-ish um, sense of, 
desperateness with me. Right. Um, you know, that you had to make it work. I had, I had to, to make it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what's interesting and in, in what a lot of people think about uh, when it comes to this is it doesn't matter your situation. We want to bring value uh, to the people regardless of what your situation is. And by, by all means, we're not saying, hey, wait till you're like in a very tough spot, then then try. <laughs> we're not saying that. <laughs> right. But we want, we want to open your eyes to the perspective of if I don't have a lot of um, – <clears throat> baggage and I don't have a lot of extra things that I have to consider, that should make it more appealing to take a risk and, right. and, and, and do that. Um, but a couple main topics, Chris, that I, I really want you to speak on today is, um, and, and to kind of give everybody how this episode's going to kind of flow, is I want to talk about, okay, if we are going to move into this, and this is solely focused on part-time, um, um, and maybe we can do another episode on how to, how to move into something full-time. Right. right. But to move in something part time, this is if we're going to paint a picture for you guys, this is this is the agent. This is the person. This is the the person that is stuck in that job that wants something more, that sees themselves at a higher level, that no longer wants to they want to be recognized and rewarded for their accomplishments and they want to get paid for what they're actually worth. Um but we also understand you may have some things, you may have bills that are due at the end of the month. You probably, depending on your situation, don't have a fat savings that you can lean on in to move into this. So how do you move into this part-time? What, if you were going to move into this part-time, what type of insurance would you recommend moving into first? Uh, what does that time commitment look like as far as training, as far as actual activity above and beyond your current job and position that you have? What is the personal investment when it comes to finances uh, that you may have to save or that you may have to invest in to, let's say, flip, right? Because you got to, if you're going to work this part time, you got to make it profitable. Right. And then probably the most important to me, how do you progress through that transition? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of the outline of the things I want to talk about um, with you today. But um, if you don't have any thoughts to that or. Yeah, um, the the one thing I will say to to tie up that that commitment conversation on this front side, so we can move forward, is regardless if you're doing this full time or part time, you have to treat it like you're doing it full time. Mm-hmm. You have to have full time commitment from day one. You're jumping into this, and your time is already allocated towards being successful for this. And if it's if it's just to pick up a few bucks here and there, um. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's, if it's, if it's worth it. Uh, it's nice to have your license. It's nice to, you know, write up your friends and family because you can make an extra 12 grand just doing that a year without even trying. Maybe you if you get that. a whole new set of friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You could do that. But um, to, to go out, purchase leads and, and casually approach this of getting in front of people and not committing you're, you're going to burn out. You're going to be tired. You're going to say, I tried insurance. It didn't work for me. <laughs> you're going to say those things. So you have to jump in with your heart, 100% committed, regardless if it's three hours, 15 hours, 40, 60, 80 hours. That's what the commitment is. I'll piggyback on that, Chris. I think a huge part of that is what is your end game? Yes. What is your mm-hmm. goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Right. Is it to make a little bit of money for the holidays to, to get Christmas gifts and stuff? Um, or is it to actually create financial freedom and an opportunity that you can bring you know, some of your friends and family and change their lives with you? Well, what is that? Yeah. And that's where that commitment question comes. So I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as uh, getting started, where did you want to start on that? As far as moving into this, um, I want to talk a little bit about if, if if we say say we hey Chris we get we got somebody on the line right now okay mm-hmm. we got a listener here um, they've been contemplating this for a while um, they're looking at moving in but they have a <laughs> they have this is Chris by the way uh, <laughs> they have a lot of unanswered questions and the first right. one is is if I'm going to look into this part time um, kind of what are the what are the different part time opportunities that I can come into um, as far as the verticals of insurance um, and kind of uh, what would you recommend me okay. starting? And getting, how to in, start? getting in part time with the goal of getting profitable 
sooner rather than later is probably mm-hmm. yeah. okay. Great. So as far as different verticals, uh, we there's final expense, mortgage protection, bank on yourself, um, IUL, retirement strategies, right? And so when I look at those, um, and I'm looking at something that's quickly profitable, what I'm looking for is something that is a one sit close that I'm going to have one conversation and I'm going to write an application, something that's going to pay, pay out quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. And probably in different order, we'll say a one sit close, something that's simple to underwrite. All right. Something that's going to pay quickly. Those are probably the three main pieces. And if I'm throwing a fourth one in that, it's, that it's a clear problem that's uh, that has a simple solution. So, so it's fairly simple to understand and present. Correct. Yes. Yes. So when I'm looking across the landscape of, of those opportunities, um, the, the IUL uh, tax uh, free retirement strategies, I feel like there's, there's a, a learning curve there and you have to find good mentorship to be successful in that along with, some good resources and um, technology to be able to uh, communicate effectively and present effectively. Yeah. And, and it's probably going to be multiple conversations and sits before you're going to be able to write that, that product. Uh, uh, yeah. And I want to add one more um, variable in, in your list there. And I would say something that doesn't have a large upfront cost. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's interesting because you say the you know the re- the retirement the annuities the IULs um, you know the bank on yourself concepts that could be uh, I would say for the the vast majority of our listeners uh, d- depending on where they are in their life it, it really you know changes it but let's say you're leaving a career you're currently in a career that you have a high net worth network yeah. Um, mm-hmm then that might be something, or if you have some sort of financial experience, some sort of yes. uh, understanding, prior understanding already, uh, that may be something that you can have a low to none lead cost because you can talk to your network, your warm right. market, and mm-hmm. you can navigate that area and you could have a huge return on investment by partnering with um, you know, somebody that can teach you some easy solutions. Yes. And I think that the two key parts that are going to take up most of your time on that front side is going to be um, finding a good mentor. Mm-hmm. Like just trying to figure that out yourself is you get lost in the woods real quick. Exactly. So finding a good mentor and also um, finding uh, oh the education side of it, learning how it works and what it means mm-hmm. and you know, mech limits and doop, boop, 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 all the beep bops that go along with the technology of it. But yes. And, and the same thing with that, that bank on yourself, like you have to find a good mentor. There's an education piece. And, and also in this conversation, getting in front of people, whether that's warm market or leads mm-hmm. for that one set close, like that's, if I'm looking for people who are looking for a quick profitability to get started and set into this insurance pathway and then possibly making some adjustments would be final expense. Boom. That's what I'm looking at. And, and the reason I'm saying that is so we have mortgage protection on the other side. Mortgage protection, there's some underwriting lessons that you have to learn first before you can start presenting options. And you may not even know what they are. Mm-hmm. So it takes a while to get up and running yeah. in those conversations. I would also say uh, the biggest difference, and I completely agree with you on the final expense, because you can get in there to almost no or low cost. The market is never going to go away or fluctuate or change. Mm -hmm. So you can't be all of a sudden, like in mortgage protection, there's abundance of leads and opportunities everywhere. Hey, you go through this script, you talk to these people, boom, that can fluctuate with the market. Final expense does not change. You probably know a lot of people in your family that are approaching that age um, that it is relevant to them. Um, so yes, I, I completely agree with you. And I think the biggest difference between that final expense working part-time than the mortgage protection part-time, um, by the way, they're both phenomenal options to start Correct. part-time. Yes. The only mm-hmm. difference in my opinion is going to be, um, yes, learning a little bit of the different underwriting nuances. Um, for the most part, Chris, I might argue the underwriting, if you started fresh might be a little easier just because you're dealing with typically healthier clients. For what? Mortgage protection? For mortgage protection. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> it, it, you know. I've had a lot of, 
a lot of conversations. But, it could be, it could yeah, be. But yeah. I'd say the mm-hmm. biggest difference, in my opinion, mm-hmm. is the investment it's going to take on the agent part, on your part, coming in part-time because of sheer lead cost right. and investment mm-hmm. up front uh, to get enough opportunities to make that roll in where final expense, there's a lot more... Um, there's a there's a larger variety in lead source at all different price ranges, and you can you could you guys you could literally find a place and go nor, door knock an, an area that is a perfect final expense demographic and make money. Yeah, yeah, just you have a, an opportunity of showing something that about who you are, what you do, what you're offering the community, and pick a nice little spot, uh, let people know who you are, and sit down and have conversations. But that is. I think it is a great entry point to learn what insurance, life insurance does, how it helps people, Mm -hmm. how the underwriting processes do work, Mm -hmm. getting, and guys, here's something that nobody talks about is getting a good name with companies as a good underwriter, Mm -hmm. like getting started on that front side, like you're writing good business with them and they're like, oh, okay, we can, we can trust him typically, like if there's a, a question or a gray area, but uh, those uh, simple to learn, profitable, quick profitability. Most companies uh, for final expense carriers pay out what twenty four to seventy two hours. Yeah, yeah, and it, it it's large large payouts typically. Yeah, the advanced the commissions, advanced yes. commissions, mm-hmm. which is huge. Let's talk about the time commitment, Chris, and in regards to the training uh, in particularly in the activity and the difference here, and is what I'm trying to um, help understand is. The training as far as learning the products, learning that yeah. underwriting, learning that presentation to be able to to be able to sell. Right. And then the activity side is what kind of investment is it going to take me either going out and door knocking or running leads or picking up the phone and being able to call. And again, I have another job. I'm trying right. to add this part time. What does that kind of look like? Um, in this transition? Well, I do tell people, regardless if it's full-time or part-time, that you are launching a rocket, you're fighting (laughs) gravity. And if you're fighting gravity, you have enough fuel on your spaceship to get into orbit. Not anymore. You don't have any more, any less. So what does that mean? It means you put your foot down on the pedal regardless of what you're feeling. (laughs) That's it. Because if you're like, oh, I'm not so sure I want to do this, and you change your mind, you're burning your gas because you're fighting gravity again in the middle of the sky. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm not sure your rocket's going down and you never make it out of into orbit. So um, these conversations, man, like uh, the, the training aspect, what is the purpose of training? Training is to be equipped to sell, to serve clients. That is the purpose. But there are some people who believe that training is designed to help you get smarter. Or the training is to eliminate the fear and anxiety of actually going to have to sell. Correct. Yes. You know, so you mm-hmm. just keep training. Yeah. You never have you right. never have the anxiety or fear of failure. So if you're learning presentation and you're learning um, underwriting, those are typically the most important pieces. You might be learning uh, getting somebody on the phone or door knocking <laughs> along with that. So really kind of three segments. More there, but I'm just breaking it down super simple. Um, At some point, when you're taking that information, you have to take ownership of it to be able to be successful. So what I'm saying, Zach, for example, for underwriting, I learned the underwriting stuff. I found three or four carriers that I was going to stick to, and I made um, cards, uh, three-by-five cards of different ages, uh, male, female, I put tobacco, non-tobacco, all of these were different piles, and then health conditions, two piles of health conditions. And then I gave them to my wife. She would draw from these different piles, and that was the client I was working with. Did she put on different wigs or <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah, fire up chain, a cigarette every now and then? She's smoking. What do you want? What do you want, kid? Um, <laughs> but, and she was still hot, but it's kind of weird. But um, as we were doing those, I was taking ownership of that process. Yeah. And that's important that, that, that it's tangible that you do the work to be successful because what most people do is they'll they'll read through it, they'll flip through it while they're watching America's Got Talent. Like, oh wow. You know, and and then they'll set it aside and they'll say, I did all the I did all the underwriting training you told me to do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now now let's 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 take this back from um from the beginning. So 
as far as um, moving into this part time, let's say we got our license, we're all ready to go. Um, the training, how if you're coming part time, how long and in terms of days, weeks, whatever months, um, should you be training before you're hit, hitting the activity portion? Um, man, it's it's hard for me to put a timeline on it because I feel like you should always be training. Always. Five months? No, no. Okay. I mean, it should be really like two weeks, maybe, two maybe weeks. ten days, <clears throat> maybe ten days of seeing somebody do the process or at least learning the process well enough. I know people who've listened to our podcast and go out and have success just from listening to the podcast. You're exactly right. So, 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 so one thing you can do is you can watch our videos while you're at work. You can listen to our podcast while you're at work or on your lunch break or commuting to and from battling traffic wherever you live. Um, that is going to be a significant advantage in the training. Um, if you have kids, you have commitments, you have dinner, obviously after you put them to bed, right. you can do a little training, you can do some presentation work. Yeah. Um, so basically if you're committed to that, again, the word committed over a two, maybe two and a half week time frame, you should have other than your fear and anxiety of actually trying it, you're as ready right. as you're going to be because there's a portion of training that you can't learn by not being in the game. Yes. You got to be in the game. You got to be in the flow. You got to understand the speed. Let's say it this way. Um, you should be training and getting ready up, to, up through contracting. That's why I like that number because sometimes contracts can take 10 days. Mm -hmm. So if you're prepped and ready when you get your writing numbers, then you're good to go. But to make the mistake of saying, I'll wait for my writing numbers, then to start training, that's a that's a major mistake that, right. that, that a lot of people make. So I like that seven to ten days because of the fact you're waiting. You're waiting. So if you're going to wait, you might as well master before you get out. Yeah, so I, let's, let's, t let's touch on a little activity, and, and then I want to move to the investment portion of this. Okay. Um, when it comes to activity, um. Now, this, is a, this could vary depending on if you're doing in-home sales or phone sales, right? Also, we know it can vary, um, you know, from different seasons and things that are going on. But whenever you started part-time, the best way to explain this is you still had other jobs. You still had two mm -hmm. kids. You still had a wife. You still had commitment. You still had bills. What was your activity part-time moving into this? So I had made arrangements with my employer <clears throat> that I could take uh, two and a half days to work on this. So it was Monday, Tuesday, and then part of Wednesday that I was able to go see clients. Um, so I was working for them Wednesday, half the day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's that's what my commitment was. And I took Sunday off. But um, really what you have to do is give yourself opportunities to get a lot of get through the learning curve. That's ultimately what you have to do. And if, if you aren't, then you aren't going to be successful. So if, if let's say you don't have the luxury of negotiating those two and a half days, then it's going to be, um, five to whatever time. And the great thing, like maybe telesales, you're doing telesales and you're on the East coast. We're on Eastern standard time here at five o'clock. Then I can get leads in California in Washington, and it's uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock. Thanks for thanks gotcha, for the math. Buddy. You knew I was going to struggle with that. So even if you're calling at 10 p.m., it's 7 p.m. I could have said any number there. <laughs> you could I would have. I would have bought it. I would have bought it. As <laughs> seven, if you're calling at 10 p.m. at your time, it's 7 p.m. there. So you're 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 borrowing time yeah. to be able to master your craft. That that is the point because. You aren't going to, uh, God bless you, if you come out, hit all cylinders running, and you write $3,000 your first two days. I mean, congratulations, because you aren't the norm. That's typically not the case. Matter of fact, when I was door knocking and training agents, I was nervous when I wrote. I was like, oh, boy, I hope they don't think this is normal if I'm writing 5000 in a day. <laughs> like, <laughs> cool your jets. you got a lot to learn still. So, yeah, but yeah. I, I, I think that's... That's phenomenal advice. And, and one thing I would like to add to that is creating some momentum in your training. Um, whenever, like what was key, I believe, in your transition was you had back-to-back -back days. 
So you're focused, you're dialing in. Yes. If mm-hmm. you're setting call times or call days, telesellings in the evenings, you need to have multiple hours and committing to yes. those hours yeah. to actually call and move through and get better and, and, and do it. Like I don't recommend making two phone calls every 30 minutes and then doing different oh, no. things throughout the days. Like no. you're not going to get a rhythm. You're not going to get momentum. You're not going to learn from your mistakes or, or areas right. of improvement. So try to compile things back to back, commit and have a strict time schedule, especially if you're starting uh, telesales um, over the phone in the evenings, block out this time, let your family know your vision, the ultimate vision. That's, so dude, that, that is it, so huge. It makes sense for them and they're aligned with you and encouraging you because there's days that you're going to need that encouragement. You're going to mm-hmm. need that help because you're not going to feel like doing it. Yeah. Let me, um, let me talk about that back-to-back piece you were talking about if um and and i've done this when we were building life insurance academy we were you know building uh advanced team partners all those things were happening at the same time there were days i was selling on friday saturday sunday Mm -hmm. out in the field door knocking on friday saturday and sunday so that's valuable like that's massively valuable and you might have to have that conversation with your spouse and say this is the dream. This is what I see for us as a family, greater things. And if you can get those back-to-back Saturday, Sundays rolling into Monday, getting your five hours of call time of doing full days, like 8.30 to 8 p.m. of dial time. That's why I'm saying the floor on the, the pedals on the floor, those two days and then rolling into Monday, that is super valuable. That's way more valuable than Monday at 5 o'clock. Tuesday at five o'clock. I'm not saying don't do those, but it it, it really accelerates you because you're getting your brain's yes. processing all the all the things it needs to. A hundred percent. Let's talk about the the financial side of this, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, I know we talked about you know the vertical of insurance moving into there's uh, each type of insurance. They're all profitable. You can all have a a high level um, return on investment, but one key factor is. Um, and I think in anybody's success is pressure and pressure is always directly related to, um, finances and, in and, and time, right? right. Pressures, finances and time. Like how much money do you have a saved moving into this part-time opportunity? Um, typically you have a lot, most likely you're moving in full-time. If we're having this part-time conversation is because you don't have a, a ton, um, right. saved or maybe none. So, Putting that in consideration, what can we expect moving into this part time as far as uh, investment um, for what the what's it what's it going to cost? What are our expenses, and and what can we expect a return on investment to be? Yeah. So if you're this is this is a tricky conversation for for part time. It just really is. I mean, but don't trick them. I'm not trying to trick you. Uh, I believe you're. If you're, you need to give yourself a lot of real opportunities. So if, let's say face-to-face, for example, if you're a full-time agent, you would probably recommend at least 20 leads to get in front of people to have conversations. If I'm talking to a part-time agent, though, Zach, I'm probably saying the same thing. And the reason, and you and I may not, we never talked, like we haven't really fleshed this out, but the reason I'm saying that is because I want to give them as many opportunities as close together as I possibly can. And I can do that with 20 leads versus like 15 leads, Mm -hmm. right? So it it, it compresses time for them to be able to get in front of people. Now there's different ways to do that. You can do that with aged leads that are available. You can do that with aged digital leads. I know people who are crushing it with aged digital leads, writing two, 3,000 in three days, having conversations with people. So that could cost three bucks a lead, or you could do it with direct mail. That's like 40 bucks a lead, depending on where you live. Yeah. Um, I want to give my opinion on if you have little to no budget, Um, little to no budget, you're going to have to put a little bit more time or be smarter with your time and activity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think this is where your spouse or somebody can help you. I would pick up as many, many old leads because like you said, you know, 20 leads, fresh leads, depending on what kind they are, you're looking at $500 to $1,000 in investments um, on that. Maybe you don't have that on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis, how often you're buying 20 leads. But can you pick up age leads of some sort? 
at a hundred or 200 of those and maybe only spend a hundred, $200, right? Somewhere right. in that, but you're going to have to spend something. Um, and what I would recommend is you make that pile, you know, you, you, you know, you go to church on Sunday, you do all your thing, you, you have your brunch. Um, and then approaching that afternoon, you pick up the phones and start presetting appointments for the evenings of the week. Let's say you only have that five to eight. Well, let's call and start scheduling right. as many mm-hmm. appointments as we can. And don't bank on those appointments. Schedule them every 30 minutes if you have to, because if you have to say, I'm sorry, I couldn't get to you, that's great because you're going to have disappointments, mm-hmm. <laughs> people that do not show up. You're going to have other things in the case. So just dial your tail off. Get your spouse to help you dial the tail off. Do this together. Make it a fun. Make it a game activity. Try to pre-schedule as many appointments as you can for those little time windows you have throughout the week and or um, go for a nice cruise, find a perfect final expense area, uh, go print you out a little bit of a flyer with your name on it, what you do, why you like to serve this community, and maybe put a Calendly link or something on there so they can schedule an appointment. But go to the door with intention, knock on it, go through your script, tell them who you are, what you do, why you love doing this, and say, hey, I'm going to be in your area this week. Which time works for you to go through your your, your new state regulated final expense programs? And start booking appointments from yeah. door knocking. You can yeah. do that as well to take advantage of those opportunities. And the truth is this: more millionaires are made in this business. And every single one of those who made it at that level, like scrapped and clawed all the way through the process, the great thing is there's so much opportunity in this business. It's insane. Mm-hmm. And the more I'm in it, the more I'm amazed by it. You think I'd heard everything by now. I, ha- I haven't. I haven't, man. And I get excited when I hear this because there are people who are finding success, simply introducing themselves, creating opportunities, having conversations with people from from the start. Chris, you could do a Facebook post. Yeah. Like you, you could... To just tell all your friends and family. Right. Mm-hmm. You could get the local nursing homes or your church community. Just spread the word. You could go do a free little seminar at an ed, you know any type of little facility that you just want to teach people about their options. Like there, you got to open your mind, and all, all of right. those things are free. They just cost a little bit of your time. Good one, good one. Takeaway here: gold. You you are right, Zach. There there are carriers that you can work with that. Um, do allow you to leave a portion to a charitable organization. And how many churches would be open to that? Mm -hmm. Of saying, hey, I would love to do a little seminar, teach people about what I do, and that they could leave a small portion of their benefit to to the church. Yep. And uh, done. One thing is, is, is Chris, just an honest opinion right off the cuff of your head, and I know you're a a huge numbers guy, so this would be perfect. (laughs) But... Let's say you take any of those options we just talked about. You go preset a bunch of appointments on old leads. You go work some new leads. You know, mentor gives you some leads, uh, whatever the case may be. Let's say you're spending two to 300 bucks. That's it. And maybe it takes you two weeks to work all these appointments. Okay. How many apps do you think you're going to get out of 20 leads, even being brand new? And, and what on a, on a normal commission, what, what do you can expect to return on that? I think brand new on 20, like 20 leads, you're investing in that on a regular basis. Um, you can, on the low end, write 2,500 for the week. Right. On so the low end. You're putting in 200 mm-hmm. or so. You're yeah. at least coming out 2,500 on the low end. Um, and and the, the, my point is, if you look at this in the end game of this transition, if the end game is this to become a career, this to become a business, this to be grow an agency, you're going to reinvest that money. Correct. And now you have more opportunities and it's easier. And, and, and guys, it, it can literally take one week to reinvest. And now your entire um, lead opportunity has quadrupled or the quality has went through the roof for the following week. It's not going to take you months to do that. Right. Now, if you take every bit of that money, go dump it in something else, now you have to do that initial grind over and over again and first gear the car, winding it out as hard as you can. Yeah. Um, and the last point I want to talk about, Chris, is walking through this, how and what is the best way to transition from part-time to full-time? What is the, what is the quick summary recipe? When you, well, I think being a part of a community is very, very helpful. Doing this all by yourself on your own is a big challenge regardless of even getting started. But um, where you are competent and confident 
in your workflow when you have a steady uh, you have steady leads coming in without massive pressure on you to reinvest and your income is uh, starting to move towards outpacing your what you currently have I won't say outpacing but it's you can see an upward move in your income I I do think it's probably time to start having conversations with people to move forward. And the reason I'm saying that is if you wait too long, um, you won't get the momentum you're going, you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. You won't ever get it. It should be a little uncomfortable at that point. And that's, that was the conversation Roger had with me. That's when you know you're ready to transition. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Hey man, you're losing money by going to work every day. You're losing money, which didn't make sense to me at first. And then I saw, what I was depositing on the on the sales side, and I was like, "Holy cow, he's right!" <laughs> Opportunity cost. Absolutely. Um, I hope this this podcast was helpful for you guys. And I got one last announcement for you. If you're the guy, or, or the gal, or anybody, uh, regardless of where you're at in your career, right? If you're coming out of college, whether if you've been downsized from another position. Um, or anywhere in between, or you're looking for something greater and you've never had the courage to do that, reach out to us. We'd love to help. Um, If this is the podcast you needed to take that extra step, we actually have a partnership um, with Excel Solutions. Um, and you can find that on our lifeinsuranceacademy.org website. And what it actually does is it actually gives you a discount for the pre-licensing course that you guys are actually able to Go get your pre-licensings in whatever state you're in and, and do the full online course, which makes it really easy because you don't have to go to an in-person one and take multiple days off work. You can go to, uh, you can do it on your own time, complete it whenever you want to. Go get your state test. It's Come required. to us for some training and help. It's required. You have to do the pre-licensing. You have to. You can't, yeah. you can't mm-hmm. go get your license without it. Might as well get it. a discount. Um, the code is, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, LIA. LIA. Good job. The, the code, the discount code is LIA, and I believe it gives you 50% off the total price of your pre licensing. Boom. So you're welcome. We appreciate you guys. Um, this is the best opportunity in the world. It's time for you to take that leap, it's time for you to take that jump. Excel Solutions, code LIA, gets you half off. Um, and we would love to be able to continue to help you and make that transition from part time. When we would love to help you in any way we can. Our goal is to help meet you where you're at and help you get where you want to go. Thanks. We'll catch you on another podcast.